Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Cecile Rayner, who is an Alexander Technique teacher uh, in Brookline, Massachusetts. She's been teaching for over 20 years. She works with a wide variety of students, and but today we're going to talk a, a little bit about the application of the Alexander Technique uh, its usefulness for women who are pregnant and also for uh, childbirth. And uh, Cecile will talk about that in general, and she'll also draw on her own experience with um, those two um, phenomena, I guess we can call it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cecile, welcome to the show. Welcome. I mean, <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Glad to have you back. We've had a couple of conversations before. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to begin, as we did before, and ask you if you could give our listeners um, a very short description of the Alexander Technique. Yeah. Um, what I tell pregnant women when they come, I explain that it's a unique approach that's been successful over a century in preventing body misuse or overuse and in resolving uh, muscul musculoskeletal problems. Um, and as a result, it improves patients' uh, posture and movement, quality of movement. And um, and I explained that the teacher uses a very gentle, hands-on process of kinesthetic re-education that engages both the mind and the body. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I myself am not a remotely an expert <laughs> in pregnancy, but... I guess the obvious thing that pretty much any Alexander Technique teacher would would notice about pregnancy is that it certainly changes the the weight distribution of of the of the woman and that can one could well imagine that would create some balance issues and uh is that would that be something that you would address in your teaching Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, the uh, growing belly m makes it that there's an ever-changing center of gravity. Mm -hmm. And um, the minute you're off balance, your body wants to compensate by tightening, unless you have a tool <laughs> to not do that. Right. And so that is one reason a lot of women, uh, a lot of pregnant women suffer from neck, back, joint discomfort, and they naturally assume it is due to their pregnancy. But uh, in my experience, it's not necessarily so. So it's more that they have been off balance before they got pregnant, and the weight of the belly is enhancing the misuse to a point that um, there's great discomfort. So I kind of explain that, uh, and I, and I, and um, and we start working with, you know, how do you find your your center at any given time? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's an interesting point that I've never uh, heard made before. Um, I typically think of pregnant women who are standing in ways that don't look very comfortable as arching their back, mm -hmm. typically. And of course, putting quite a bit of strain on their on their lower back doing it. Mm -hmm. But of course, it, it's also true that a fair number of women stand that way uh, to start with. And right. I, so I would imagine then that pregnancy would just make that uh, would exacerbate that pattern. Yes, yes, and and that's why when a pregnant woman comes to me and with those kind of problems, that's the first thing I explain. And um, I know you interviewed uh, Ilana Makova, who who mm -hmm. did a very good book on um, uh, the Alexander Technique birth book, I think it's called. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and she has wonderful pictures. In fact, I, I, I printed and, and, and enlarged and, and created a board with a lot of the pictures she uses for when I give a workshop. And I actually use some of those work, uh, pictures to teach not just women, actually, even men, because 
um, men too, for their own reason, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, tend to sometimes um, uh, use themselves with their pelvis forward and locking the knees and all that. And so when I show them in, in that book, this a picture of a pregnant woman and on one side, she's using her Alexander and she's very balanced above her feet. And on the other, she's totally letting the belly pull her forward and there's a whole, she's off center everywhere. And um, so I, I point that out, and but then I explain that it, 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 it men and women do that uh, apart from pregnancy. And in the mm -hmm. case of women, of course, the pregnancy will enhance the problem, and then they're going to feel like they can't lay on their back. Mm -hmm. And and um, and of course, uh, this is uh, supported by doctors who don't necessarily know what we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, just assume, since it happens frequently, that that's a given, that you shouldn't be on your back. Um, but my experience is it's not necessarily so. And um, I, I, I was on my back until the very end. Some women, maybe at the end, you know, they may feel like, okay, I need, uh, there's too much pressure. But a lot of people, including me, we can do active resting until the very end. So, mm -hmm. and, and we should say here that the, the the active rest yes. that you just um, alluded to is an Alexander-based um, lying down. It's a term, and it, it, it describes lying down in a particular configuration, generally on a fairly firm surface, uh, perhaps a massage table or a carpet with some support under your head and your knees elevated relative to your your hips and it has a lot of advantages for anybody oh, uh, and certainly uh, for a, a, a woman who's pregnant if they can do it I would imagine that would be an incredibly useful uh, process to begin exploring as soon as possible but I'd like to come back to mm -hmm. for a moment to your earlier uh, point that Someone coming to you for Alexander lessons for the first time, let's say if they're pregnant, what you're going to be teaching them is not just going to be useful for the uh, the pregnancy period, mm -hmm. but it's also going to be useful down the road when they're having to move around and do things as parents or just any activity that they're doing. Yep. Uh, it's a very general approach, and I suppose... I myself have not worked a lot with pregnant women, but mm -hmm. I would think in general that the basic way that you're teaching them is not that much different from anybody else. Is, would that be yeah. true? Yeah, yeah. It's it's really the same principle. If they're applied, they can be applied to any situation, any activity, and they will um, promote a better use uh, within that activity or that situation and mm -hmm. uh yeah so it i mean the the only difference is that i i am i have i am a mother and i've gone through all this and i can relate and i can give examples um you know it, it, it has a different power if i say i was able to lay on my back the whole time i was pregnant as opposed to reading a study that says yes or no um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But and I also say, you know, everybody's different, and I have, you know, dif we all have a different kind of body, and it could be that, you know, if you have a little more padding, it might be easier on top of having good use, <laughs> uh, as opposed to somebody who's more bony. You know, there are other things to consider, but uh, uh, to go just by the the recommendation of doctors who say it's not a good idea, I usually try to demystify that concept. Mm -hmm. And another thought uh, occurred to me, um, certainly in, in general, someone taking Alexander mm -hmm. technique lessons will notice less um, internal pressure if they're, if they're scrunching themselves as part of their misuse pattern. Now, I would imagine that for a woman who's pregnant, uh, there would also then be less scrunching on the baby. Would that would that not be the case? 
Yeah, not only the baby, but the internal organs. Um, and a lot of women have uh, digestive problems, reflux, different things, just because they're collapsed onto themselves. And the minute they start, you know, if they come to the technique, and I point out, you know, they discover what it means to think up and out, and they create more space in that, you know, between the, the, the baby and the chest and and suddenly they feel much better and they can digest better and um so yes it's very uh, crucial and uh, talking about pressure on the babies it's really exactly what brought me to the technique <laughs> uh-huh. um um I, I mean i not that i was uh, well, yeah i was pregnant with my first child and at the time i was working on a phd in french literature and i was at the library and I caught myself with my belly squished again the, against the desk while I was studying, and I was totally squished. And, and, and it just dawned on me, what am I doing to myself? What am I doing to my baby? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had just that moment of realization, and from then on, I started really thinking more and more about things related to that, and that actually brought me to change career. <laughs> oh, I so, didn't know that. That's, yeah, that's a fascinating yeah. story. So you started ta- taking lessons for the first time when you were already pregnant. Uh, no, no, I have to uh, clarify. Um, it's the f- it, um, I had been exposed to the concept of the technique uh, because I was a, a childhood friend of Mara uh, Sokolsky, who was mm-hmm. also a teacher. Mm-hmm. And uh, while she was training, uh, she w- at the time I lived in Paris, and she would go back and forth from Paris to New York. And I kept hearing about the technique, and it all sounded very interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you know how sometimes you have a mission in life? And you have to focus on that before you can pay attention to other things. And I knew I had to work on my PhD. So I just kept the technique in a, you know, on the side of my awareness. But it's in that moment when I became pregnant <clears throat> and I caught myself that I realized, what am I doing to myself? And, um, um, and it was, so, yeah, so then... Um, uh, so I had heard about it, and but uh, I, I'm trying to remember. Actually, it's been a while. <laughs> I, I actually for, forget if it was after that. I think it's after that. Yeah, that I started taking lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, actually. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, uh, we've talked about uh, the usefulness of. Alexander lessons for some for a woman who is pregnant in terms of balance and movement and so on um but um obviously um that what you learn from Alexander lessons can probably help uh during the delivery process as well right Yes. So, so actually, just to finish on what I, I, I was starting to remember is that mm-hmm. uh, it, it's after that experience that I took lessons, but I didn't, I didn't take them for quite a few years after. Mm-hmm. So with my first child, I went into labor. I went through pregnancy and into labor without any Alexander um, lessons or, or experience, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, just an intellectual understanding of what it might be. Right. Um, so the first... The first, uh, the pregnancy wasn't too bad, but the delivery, the first delivery, was uh, was really not so good. <laughs> and I mean, it was a healthy delivery, but it took like thirty hours. <laughs> oh, wow! Yeah. And basically, uh, at the time, I I couldn't I couldn't have analyzed it the way I am now. But uh, in retrospect, part of it is that often doctors tend to recommend you to lay down, you know, Mm -hmm. and to lean back or to lay down. And so it really slows down the process. You, they're not, they're working, they're encouraging us to do that partly because it's, you know, for people who are not aware, they think it's a good thing. And, but also it's more convenient for them to work on women when they're laying um, back like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so at the time it's, it felt like it was going to never end. It was the, the, the very difficult experience and it, it, um, I felt like a total victim of the whole thing. It was really, uh, difficult, but, um, uh, but then again, uh, six and a half years later, um, Mm -hmm. in between my two sons, I, uh, ended up training 
becoming an Alexander Technic teacher. And in fact, I was uh, in my training course. Um, um, my son was born in March and I graduated in June. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, he, I was, I was receiving hands-on from everyone while I was pregnant, mm -hmm. and it was the end of my pregnancy, and it was quite um, amazing already before the pregnancy. But then, uh, because again, I was laying. That's the time that I was laying on my back the whole time, no problem, mm -hmm. and um, and then when I went to the hospital. They, of course, wanted me to lay back again, and that's when I knew better. So I said, no, thank you. Uh, I'm going to sit, and I'm going to squat, and I'm going to do all those things. Mm -hmm. And um, But mainly when it was getting closer, um, I was basically almost like on a table, like on a horse. You know, I had I remember my legs hanging a little bit on each side. Mm -hmm. And I was, because I didn't want it, take anything they I was hooked up to um, a machine and I had like a belt um, and I could see on a screen the strength and the of each uh, contraction mm -hmm. and so the beauty of Alexander is that uh, I had a tool that was very empowering every time a contraction came I would release right through my feet even though my feet were hanging down it didn't matter I would just release right through my feet and the at will, the contraction would fade away. Even my husband who was sitting there was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that was an amazing experience. I felt very empowered. I felt like I had a tool I could use that was giving immediate results. <laughs> and... So, so um, I, I, I guess this will express my ignorance of uh, the birthing process, but the contractions that you're referring to, mm -hmm. um, they are a natural part of yeah. birthing, right? But you're saying that that you were able to allow them to happen with out them creating additional stress on you or additional yeah. pressure? Would that be a good way to describe it? Yeah, because I wasn't trying to make them, uh, to prevent them. I was <laughs> letting them be, but I, because I would release instead of tighten, instead of react, I was responding with right. my Alexander directions. So the my understanding is the contractions are only there to to tell you where you're at in the in the process. I mean that's one of the function anyway, and but they don't have to linger. They only linger like in my first pregnancy because I was fighting with it. I was like, ah, oh, it hurts. Right, and it, right. This time I was like, oh okay, and I released. And so whatever was not, uh, meant to happen. Uh, whatever those contractions are for, apart from letting us know where we're at, was happening organically and I was just working with it. And um, I really didn't feel like I was in much, um, you know, pain. And, I, and some people, uh, when I told my story uh, to friends or whatever, they said, well, but isn't it customary that the second child is easier? And I want to be very clear here that the difference would had nothing to do with my my uh, the fact that it was my second one because I could tell that if I didn't release I would tighten you know I mean like it's uh, it, it is painful but but as soon as you if you have a tool and you just let it go you the pain decreases and fades away mm -hmm. so I, I'm very aware that uh, and I was at the time that had I not have that tool it would have been quite a different story even though it was my second one so I, I think it has a lot to do with the openness um, mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. body and all that, you know, but so. And is, is there anything else that you'd like to say about um, the usefulness of the technique for pregnancy or delivery that we haven't touched on? Um, I think that uh, basically I would I would just reinforce the fact that that the technique um, uh, teaches us to release into movement and that the pregnant the delivery is a, is a movement something that's happening that has a motion and if you work it helps you work with it and to be better prepared for it you can do a lot of things that we do in regular lessons from squatting to going on all fours to there's lots of things you can do in between to get yourself in a better place mm -hmm. um, but it but through all of them it's learning to release through the movement mm -hmm. i think that that allows 
more ease and more empowerment during the um, the event. <laughs> right, and I, I this may be beyond uh, our scope, but I'm curious what you would say um, about. Uh, well, we've talked briefly about the effects on the on the baby. I mean, I would I would imagine that a child born uh of of a mother who's using alexander principles would would have would be less likely to have certain stress related conditions wouldn't you think i i think so but we don't I mean, have any i mean there's no studies of that but it just I seems to me yeah. to be pretty pretty logical that when you're when you're coming out as it were of the of the of the mother and there's mm-hmm. less pushing less force going on, less extra efforting, less mm-hmm. pain all around you, that, that you're going you're gonna to have a little edge. Uh, oh, absolutely. You know? just... N- not to mention that these days, uh, more and more, um, doctors are recommending women to have more uh, epidurals and, or to have a C-section. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's more mm-hmm. and more C-sections. And, and women go along and they all go along for the in the name of conveniency sure. but nobody thinks about the baby's needs and and there's a reason why it may uh, stay there longer you know and so and the other thing is um, just like after the birth how you hold the baby you you're going to mm, mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. you're going to communicate a use in in lots of different ways and we can talk about that some other time but um but just being in you, the way your body is holding the baby, either with space or with a grasping around it, that's going to affect how even I believe how it's go- he's going to evolve as a uh, you know in in the in the womb. And 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 after birth, right? You're and holding abs- the baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I hadn't thought of that, but that I mean, you are in a sense giving an Alexander lesson to your child. Exactly. I mean, you're, you're, if you're tense in yourself, um, which one could easily imagine a new mother <laughs> might be, uh, that tension is going to be conveyed to the newborn. And if you're able to release that tension in yourself, which is exactly what the Alexander technique teaches, um, Mm -hmm. that's going to be transmitted to the child as well. Exactly, and it's true for fathers as well. Uh, Yes. uh, You've seen Mm -hmm. there are men and women who uh, can remain really calm and released when they hold a baby, and those babies love it, and they can fall asleep in your arms very easily. And other people, they have no clue what to do with that little precious bundle, and right. and they're all uptight. And the they're terrified. Baby starts, yes, and the <laughs> baby starts crying. Yes, <laughs> that's absolutely true. Well, this might be a good place to bring our, our conversation to an end. Okay. Um, my my guest today has been Cecile Rayner, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in Brookline, Massachusetts. And if uh, anything that we've been talking about uh, intrigues you and you live in um, you live in the Boston area, we'll put a link to her uh, website by the interview. We'll also put a link to a website that will give you more information about the Alexander Technique and uh, enable you to find a teacher in, in your area. Cecile, thanks so much for this. Thanks for having me.